welcome back to the second channel. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm gonna be doing a video about Andy Negative. He's TikTok's latest sensation. And by that, I mean, I actually don't know if any of you will have heard of this guy before. Before sitting down to record this video, I kind of thought that this guy was like a, another one of like those TikTok wide phenomenons that like everybody knows about and is talking about because he's like showing up on all of our For You pages. Because he's been showing up on my For You page like every day for the past few months. But while sitting down to start recording this video, I started looking through his TikToks and realized that I think his most liked TikTok only has like 6,000 likes. I'm actually starting to feel like I, it's just me that is in this like weird niche of like bad pop punk music on TikTok. I don't even know what niche this is. But I want to talk about this guy because I think it, it brings up a lot of important topics for social media influencers like me, and Andy Negative, who's this guy on the screen right now. This is, this is who we're talking about. Quite honestly, I think that Andy Negative needs my help. So I'm here to help him. Andy, if you're watching this, please take some notes. Okay, so this is the first TikTok that thrust Andy into the spotlight. And by spotlight, I mean this video has 4,000 likes and 400,000 views, which is not a great ratio. So that'll give you an idea of what we're about to watch. Should I just write the next emo anthem? We are the princes and princesses of the glory days. We were raised on a tree yeah, he starts the TikTok off by saying, did I just write the next emo anthem? TikTok answered with a resounding no, unfortunately. As you could probably guess from listening to the song, it was not well received on TikTok. The top comment with, holy shit, I didn't even realize this. This has 16,000 likes and this video only has 5,000 likes. Just says, no, you did not write the next emo anthem. I mean, personally, I'm not like that into the emo music scene. So like, when I saw this, I guess I was probably like, uh, this song is kind of corny, but like, you know, I'm not really into that scene in general. So I'm like, I don't know if people like this. Maybe, I mean, people like corny music. There are people out there that like corny music. So I didn't think it would be like completely negatively received, but I literally don't think I've seen one nice comment about this song. We've got comments like, yo, unrelease this with fire emojis. People saying, is this satire? People labeling the song as Disney rock. Over the course of the next couple of days, Andy continued to promote his song in pretty much the same way. He has another TikTok that says, this song is for all the weird kids that ever felt left out. Which, if you know anything about me and you watched my video about the Kyle Sheely situation, you know I really love it when people identify as being weird and people describe themselves as being kind of a weirdo. I really love that. That's like one of my favorite things. People were commenting on his TikToks, giving him hate. People were duetting him, giving him hate. This TikTok has 133,000 likes. I just write the next emo anthem. Let's check. No, but yeah, people are just being so fucking mean to this dude. And you know what? Sure, it's not a great song, but like, I do think that the hate on him is a little bit unjustified, or at least it was at first. Like TikTok's just trashing this dude, calling him Pellet Gun Kelly. I mean, making fun of the way he enunciates words. The creator of this TikTok said, the way he enunciates words makes my brain itchy. And I kind of just felt bad for the guy. Like he didn't really do anything that wrong. He just made a corny song. And you know, I know that I make fun of people basically every week on my channel. I think maybe the difference here is there's like not even that much to make fun of. It's like he just wrote a bad song. It's not even that funny. So I think that's why it, it feels different to me. Not to mention like all of the hate comments on his videos are so unoriginal. I, I do find it kind of ironic that like people are commenting on this dude, hating on him for being like generic and corny, but like half of the comments on his videos are, yo, unrelease this with fire emojis. Wait, what the fuck? Someone commented, we know it's you under their dance. Are there people that think this guy is me? To that point, I guess, of people thinking that this might be me doing some kind of joke, there are people that think that this is satire. A week ago, I called you guys idiots for not realizing that this is satire and not knowing that this guy knows what he's doing. And that was wrong. This is a real song and a real man. So, uh, my bad. This is something I actually kind of go back and forth on, whether this guy is doing some sort of satire routine or if this is like his actual self. I heavily lean towards this is who he actually is. He's been posting videos on this TikTok account for a long ass time. If you scroll down, this is at, at the very least a long con because he's been making videos as the same type of person since, I guess the beginning of 2020. 
Bunny. And I think he has a YouTube channel too. Okay, he's been making videos on his YouTube channel for six years. Sunday fun day question mark? Go ahead and check that out. Hey guys, so it's 10 a.m. on a Sunday, uh, which is really early for me. Usually I don't get up at 10 a.m. I was bartending last night. Okay, so this is kind of weird. I do feel like he's giving off like a slightly different persona in this video. Maybe it's because he just woke up. But I do feel like in his newer videos, he's a lot more like, turns out I just made a Disney pop song. I just made the new emo b banger. Hmm. And then in this video from six years ago, he's like, what's up guys? I'm, I got fucked up last night. Okay, let's watch, let's look at like this song from five years ago. Let's see if it's similar at all in style. <laughs> Did you ever stop to think that this world isn't half the world you thought that it could be? Okay, still not really my cup of tea, and it did seem a little bit corny, but now I don't know. Like, it does seem different. It's like a little darker, maybe. Maybe it's just because it's acoustic. The people who are saying Disney, whatever, Disney pop punk, that is very much the vibe I'm getting from the newer stuff. To be fair, I haven't listened to the whole song. Maybe I should do that first. <laughs> We could be anything we want Well, we want to have a good time Is that too much to ask? The fuck? Just change genres mid-song. Okay, there's something weird going on where without this video that he puts at the end of all of his TikToks of him doing the song, without this, it's actually not as bad. I think it might just be like watching him sing that is part of the problem. Yeah, this definitely isn't helping, for sure. This is how I recorded the vocals for when we were young. We are the princes and princesses of... First, I set up a blanket. Oh, I thought that was gonna be the whole thing. I recorded the vocals. Basically just like stood in front of a microphone and I sang. This is the Apex 460. Oh man, he's got a poster of the Joker in his room. It's not easy defending you, dude. It's not It's not easy to defend you, my guy, but I'm, I'm gonna try it, all right? We're gonna flip this around. We don't need to be so mean to this guy. Honestly, the, the song, if you give it a listen, it's not that bad without him performing it. I feel like because he's got like the, that like cringy emo aesthetic that people, a lot of people think is cringy. Of course, watching him perform the song is going to make it worse, but without him performing it, it was not as bad. Still not something I would listen to. And also I think that the parts that he didn't put in his TikToks are better than the parts that he did put in his TikToks, which is a little suspicious, honestly. And the song also does come off as kind of like nostalgia bait in a way. It's talking about how like, when we were little, everything didn't seem so bad, but now, Turns out things are so bad. The real issue that I have with, with this situation is one, the unoriginal ass comments making fun of this dude, just like reposting the same like, yo, unrelease this over and over. It's like, yeah, I guess it's kind of sad to be promoting a song that everyone hates, but it's also sad to like keep checking this guy's profile to see if he posted any new TikToks and then post the same comment that's been getting upvotes on all the other TikToks. But aside from that, it is a little bit weird the way that Andy has responded to the hate that he's been getting. Okay. Okay, so this TikTok says, how I sleep at night knowing the emo and punk community think I'm an AI generated plant sent to destroy the scene from the inside out by releasing music created in a boardroom by business executives trying to water down alternative music until it is absorbed by pop music so they can market it to the general public. Okay, so basically he's trying to give off the vibe that like he doesn't give a shit about any, about the hate. He's got a lot of videos like this where that are just like, don't listen to him, dude. Just do you, just be you. Make them cringe. Make them say you're awful. Make them tell you to quit because they aren't really talking to you. They're talking to themselves. They're afraid of failure, but you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be normal. Just be you. Which is honestly a fine message. Like if it was, if this was the type of, the only type of response he was posting to the videos, that would be fine. It's like, honestly, I respect that. If if you're making music and other people don't like it, but you're just making it cause it's fun and you're just like being yourself and expressing yourself, then yeah, fuck everybody else. It doesn't really matter, does it? But the problem is he posts videos like this. Just be you. But then also posts videos where he's like trying to win over the people that are definitely just like fucking with him and will never like his music. The lyrics don't even run. I feel like I should address this. Y'all are aware that lyrics don't need to rhyme. The lyrics of the verse are broken up into a four bar stanza. So he goes in to like in depth on like 
rhyming schemes and like, yeah, A, B pattern. He also says that actually shirt does rhyme with shit, which it doesn't, dude, I'm sorry. These are a perfect rhyme because they're almost the exact same word. They are not a perfect rhyme. Shirt does not rhyme with shit. I don't care. I don't know who told you that. Just because they have similar letters does not mean they rhyme. This in my head it totally goes against the whole like, I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. I'm just having fun mentality. If you're then making videos being like, no guys, it does rhyme. No, listen, if you just listen to the song the way I want you to listen to it and appreciate it in the ways that I'm gonna tell you to, then it's actually good. That's actually a good song. Please do that. So Andy, if you're listening, this, this is my advice, okay? You have to pick if you want people to like your music or not. Well, you don't even have to pick that. You just have to pick what kind of persona you want to put out there into the world, okay? You can be the cool punk guy that doesn't give a fuck what anybody thinks, but then you can't go around posting videos like this where you're explaining rhyme schemes so that people will like your song. No knowledge of rhyme scheme is gonna make people like this song. OMG, this sounds like a kid's song. It's so cringe. Yeah, wouldn't want to introduce young people to pop punk. What a horrible world that would be. When we were young! Yeah, I love that he ends every TikTok with the same clip of him playing the song. Just in case you forgot what fucking song I was talking about, let's play this shit one more time. Yeah, he's also trying to do this thing here where he's like pretending that that might have been the whole point of this song to begin with. Wouldn't want to introduce young people to pop punk. Which is obviously what I was trying to do here. Again, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just trying to explain this. When people say that your song sounds like kids music, that's not because they think it would be good music for kids. They're just saying that it's not good enough to be adult music. It's not a compliment, unfortunately. It's just people being rude. Bro, you gotta stop promoting this song. Why? It's getting tons of views and streams every day. Oh, stop! All right, but you're gonna have to take it up with that. <laughs> what the hell is that? That's promotion, Andy. <sighs> what is it doing? Promoting. That's what it was born for. All right, yeah, creepy as hell for sure. And also the whole like, oh, but it's getting a tons of views and streams. It's getting tons of views and streams. I don't really feel like it works here. Your vi your music video has 4,000 views and pretty much all of the comments are, are yeah. negative. So I'm sure a few people have found Andy's music that will legitimately enjoy it. There are lots of different people that enjoy lots of different things. So I'm sure there is a market out there for Andy's music, but he is not reaching that market right now. So there is something that he is doing wrong. And it's like, okay, you just said, that like you do this for fun and you don't care what other people think about you So then why are you defending the nauseating amount of promotion you're doing for this song as being like But it's getting a ton of views and streams. You're not staying consistent with your character, all right? What do you want people to think you care about? It shouldn't be views and streams I think that there's legitimate hope for Andy as creepy as that TikTok was it was a little bit funny Like if Lil Nas X posted that about one of his new songs about how there's this like demonic version of him that is promotion in Lil Nas X. I mean, people would think it was funny, right? And it would be funny. I think that he has some like good ideas for promotion. It's just like, you just gotta get like one notch better at making music or finding your audience at the very least. And princesses of the glory days. We were raised on a dream. And honestly, that was a lot better than the actual recorded version. So I feel like, you know, there's hope for this guy. He can sing. He goes a little bit too nasally at times for me. We are strong. But I mean, look at these comments. Look, sounds so much better acoustic. This is actually way better. This is so much better. We are the princes and princesses of the glory days and even Anthony Fantano's making a song about you. I feel like if Andy can take this and somehow flip it on his head, flip it on his head and come out with like a good song that is like, you know, not trying to pander to a certain generation and doesn't sound like a Disney song, he could use this whole meme as like a leaping off point. I think that's totally possible. Andy, I think though that one lesson that would be really helpful for you to learn is something that I've seen a lot of influencers struggle with, honestly. And that is that if you're getting for something that you're proud of, don't respond to it. Don't ever try to win people over with explanations or anything like that. It's not gonna work, obviously, as, have you, as you've seen in your case, like explaining music theory and rhyme schemes to people isn't gonna make them like your song anymore. Unless you've really hurt a group of people, don't respond to hate. If people see that hate is getting to you, 
they'll be like, oh shit, that's awesome. He's reading my comments and it's having an effect on him. I'm gonna keep doing that. It's like the snowballing thing. There's a reason that certain creators can't seem to get away from drama. And every time they post a video, even if it's a pretty normal video, they'll get hate on it and people talking shit. It's because when they get hate, they have to like make a whole video discussing it and going over it. And if it's for something as inconsequential, it's just like, I didn't like this song. Just leave it, just don't address it. If it's legitimate criticism, learn from it and just, you know, hit them with the next song, that's better. You're not gonna change their mind with an explanation. You're only gonna change their mind by literally changing their mind and being a better artist than they think you are. If you are watching this, Andy, which I'm not sure if you will ever see this or make it this far into the video, but look, I mean, it sucks to get this much hate on, on stuff. I understand that. I hope that you can take uh, my advice to heart. I know that sometimes constructive and well-intentioned criticism can be the most difficult to swallow because you can't just brush it off as someone blindly hating you. But you know, I hope that you are able to learn from this and grow from this. You know, I look forward to seeing your next song. I hope it's good. So uh, that's all, bye.